what are some causes of neurotransmitter imbalance? Those are very big words, but we're here to talk about that today. I'm Dr. Carrie Lam. This is Dr. Michael Lam. What exactly does neurotransmitter imbalance kind of look like? Well, uh, we have seen so many people with adrenal uh, issues that kind of come in with, uh, I would not say mood imbalances, but it's just something is not quite right. Some days they are irritable, some days they feel calm, oftentimes intertwined and sprinkled with anxieties, and sometimes uh, panic attacks, in a, in a, unable to sleep. So when you put the whole picture together, it's just as if a body is very irritable, it's just not steady, it's just like the wind blows and it kind of falls over. And a lot of it has to deal with the bridge between how we receive sensory signals to how the body ultimately physiological believe, uh, be behave. So this bridge from sensory, let's say how, what you hear, what you see, let's say you, you, you see a robbery in process, then you can get excited, okay, and you start running away, for example. So how does this get signaled? This neurotransmitter is responsible for this. Now this imbalance is obviously when uh, things are not quite right. Mm -hmm. And now the body has its own balancing system. It's automatic, but certain things can happen, such as you know dietary choices, and, and you can tell us about you know what are some of the common right. How problems. do you, how does somebody become um, imbalanced in neuro neurotransmitters? So your gut hat is very important in helping the neurotransmitters with the receptors and even processing it. Okay, so when your gut is unhealthy, whether you're eating uh, unhealthily or processed foods or you're um, having a lot of diarrhea or loose bowels or constipation or like slow bowels, um, that could all affect your how your neuro neurotransmitters are being balanced or accepted into the body or transmitted. Yeah, in fact, you know, the, the gut is also called the second brain because, you know, many, many of the brain's uh, neurotransmitters, including uh, popular ones that come such as serotonin, the precursor are made primarily in the gut and it was then transported to the brain where it's made into the final product. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And obvious toxins like alcohol, drinking alcohol can really kill a lot of your gut cells or even smoking and we talked about the, the junk food and so that's why it's so important to keep a healthy gut in order to keep a healthy second brain. Yeah. Right. I talked earlier about you know, how sensory signals can uh, affect our physiological well-being. And you know, nowadays, if you are an adrenaline junkie or you're excited, uh, excited easily, you're looking uh, for excitation responses, uh, sensory overload, uh, you know, uh, these things can cause the body to be firing the neurotransmitters all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, we know there are different kinds of neurotransmitters. There's excitatory kind, there's an inhibitory kind, mm -hmm. and usually they are balanced by themselves. But if you cause a, a bias where the body's always firing all the time of the mm -hmm. excitatory neurotransmitters, then you have the consequences, mm -hmm. you see. Well, not only adrenaline junkies, but just light flickering. So the TV, watching TV a lot can keep throwing sensory overload to your eyes or using the computer or the phone, and that's what we yeah. see. And you, you'd be surprised how frequent this is, even though people may not realize, you know, and that's why it's always a good practice to cut down uh, sensory stimuli after about, you know, late afternoon. So your body and your brain get a chance to rest. Rest, something. yes. Mm -hmm. And other environmental toxins other than light can also affect your neurotransmitters, whether it's toxins in your laundry detergent, the pesticides in the food that you're eating, they can all interfere with the receptors and the neurotransmitter, how they transmit themselves. You know, living in this world is actually not, not too easy if you want to have neuro, good neurotransmitter function. And perhaps the most uh, important contributor is stress. Mm -hmm. Because stress causes the body to be in an excitation mode all the time. Because the body perceives stress as a threat to survival. So the only way it knows what to do is to keep firing uh, the neurotransmitter to get adrenaline up, to get the norepinephrine up. And when you have a body that's always on overdrive, eventually it burns out. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So that's all the causes of neurotransmitter imbalances that we've talked about today. We hope that you enjoyed this video. We're here to empower you to take control of your health.